Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Bruce and today I'm going to show you how I'm going to restore this cutting board. This is a board that I made for my sister probably about four years ago. And as you can see, she uses it a lot. Uh, she cooks all the time and this is pretty much a daily use board in her kitchen. So there's lots of knife scrapes. Um, they actually, when they rinse it, they set it down and it's got kind of some some water staining here on the edges and it's just time for a refresh of it. So I figured I'd take you along and show you what I do to restore this board. Come in here a little closer. So if you look right here, it's still very, very flat. This wood is very stable despite them using it every day for the last four years. And if you come right here, there's a little bit of delamination happening on that one glue joint right there and this one right here. All I can explain for that is it's been set where it sits wet for a little while after they use it. And um, I'm probably just gonna try to clean that up by shortening this board just a touch. But let's get to it. remember this is what it looked like before pretty nasty uh, didn't take much to clean it up just a few passes through the drum sander the knife marks actually came out pretty fast but this this board has a lot of oil in it it's used pretty often and um, you can still see a little bit of that residual oil that is literally soaked all the way through this thing but it's looking pretty good so I'm gonna flip it over give it a few more passes and we're gonna move on All right, next up is the miter saw. We've got this pretty well cleaned up with the drum sander. Um, I wanna get rid of these water stained edges, so I'm just gonna take a little bit off and we're gonna see how it goes. All right, so our board's looking nice and clean now. The edges are all cleaned up, it's looking great. Um, I'm gonna because I sanded, the round over came off. And so it's a little harsh to the touch on the edges. I'm gonna use a 1 8 inch round over bit and round over the edges. And then we'll be ready for a little bit of sanding and finishing. deciding to rip a clean edge on both of these sides here. Uh, I just figured the rest of the board was getting cleaned up and it was a little weathered and so might as well give everything a, a fresh edge. So did that at my uh, crosscut sled here, that way I could set it here, make a nice clean cut. And um, now I'm gonna put the round over back on it. What are you doing? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Better. Mine. It's all mine. Now it's time to raise the grain on this board. Um, we have exposed new grain and now since they use it with water, I don't want it to feel rough the first time that they wash this. So I'm just gonna spray some water on here. Get it nice and soaked. Doesn't have to be like dripping wet. Do the ends to flip it over, and then I like to get a paper towel and run it over it. I removed the excess water because it really doesn't need to sit on there. The effect is still happening, and I should have cleaned my floor. So just remove the excess, and then we'll let that sit and dry. Our board is dry now, mostly dry. I am going to sand to 220 grit and kind of 
finesse the edges, round them over a little bit. That should be it. This thing will be done, it'll be restored and ready to go back home. All right, so there's the board. Really cleaned up well. Uh, brought this maple back to its very blonde, natural self. Um, this is just a strip of very highly figured red oak that's in here. It's a nice little accent piece. I'm gonna put on some walnut oil. This is Mahoney's walnut oil. It is distilled walnut oil, I believe. Um, but it's an all natural food finish and I usually just squirt some on and I keep a cotton rag that I use pretty often in a bag for this stuff so that I can just keep reusing it. And I wipe it in here and it will probably soak up a pretty good bit now that we've done some sanding and um, looks great. Bringing some shine back to this board, a little bit of curl in it. I'll probably do a couple coats of this, just let it soak in and dry and I'll put some more on. Thanks for coming along and going through this with me. This board is done now. I'm gonna let it soak a little longer before I wipe off any of the excess and it can get back to its home and doing what it does best is food prep and all kinds of stuff. This is just a great everyday board. This style is really handy to have if to whip out and you know cut an apple or something quick like that. So I'm really glad to see that it's held up so well over the years to a lot of use. And now we've brought it back to a better life. Thank you for watching. If you learned something, let me know. Leave me a comment down below what that was. If you have another hint of something I could have done that I didn't do to restore this board, let me know that also. I've put out a couple other videos. One was about making how I make my cutting boards. So if you wanna check that out, I've got it in the cards and I'll put it in the description. Also, I have a video about my finishing process. That's from about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. So it's changed a little bit. A lot of my cutting boards, I use this uh, walnut oil now instead of mineral oil. It's really a time factor. The mineral oil takes a lot longer to do. It is cheaper. This stuff dries quicker and I feel like I get a little better finish. So um, those are just some of the changes I've made over the last 18 months or so, but check those videos out if you wanna see a little bit more of my process. I think that's really it. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. sister's house for the big reveal. Heyo! You yeah, ready? Dogs. I can't wait to see it. Voila! Oh, holy cow! Bruce, it looks <laughs> brand new. Maybe even better. Yes. This looks really, really good. I'm glad you like it.